So the last of the series for this unit is the separation of mixtures. So when we talk about matter and measurement, how do we separate mixtures? We know how to separate molecules, and we do that, of course, by doing chemical means like electrolysis. But how do we separate mixtures by physical means? And so when we separate mixtures, um, typically the constituents of the mixture retain their identity and can be separated by physical means. And there are basically four ways that we can separate mixtures in chemistry. The first way is distillation. The second way is filtration. The third way is chromatography. And the fourth way for now is another process called liquid chromatography. So all of these four things we're going to talk about here in a second. So the first one, distillation. The idea of distillation is that you use the differences in boiling points of substances, two liquids in other words that are mixed together, to separate a homogeneous mixture into its components. And we're going to actually do this this year for my AP students. Your job will be, in a problem that I give you, you're going to basically separate uh, two liquids. The first one I'll have is water, and the second one I'll have in there is ethanol. Because they have two different boiling points, one will boil out first, and then it'll go into this condensing tube. In the condensing tube, the cold water in, the cold water out, cools the water, uh, cools the gas that flows in here, causing it to condense back into its liquid phase. And of course, it then winds up dripping into a flask. And the flask, of course, will then collect whatever has the lower boiling point. It's never always going to be water. In this case, they're talking about salt water being um, forming pure water. But our process will not be salt water. We're going to actually wind up separating. Um, ethanol and water through the process of distillation in this class. And it, make, and it has to be a homogeneous mixture for this to work. So this is an example where we can separate a homogeneous mixture. Filtration is a, is a process in which we can separate a liquid from a solid. Okay? So in filtration, solid substances are separated from liquids or even a solution. And so when we get precipitates in this class where a solid comes out, sometimes we want to make sure we separate that out from the liquid or the solution that's left over. We use the process of filtration. And there are some steps in which we're going to be talking about how to then separate them. The first thing you always want to do is you form the cone in there. And there's a technique we'll teach you that in class. The second thing you need to do is then wet it first. You actually wet this whole thing so you create a seal around the uh, the funnel and the uh, paper filter to ensure that no no um, solids seep out on the outside because sometimes the funnels are actually bigger than the paper and if that's the case we want to make sure we have a good seal around there and then the third thing you do is that you didn't pour it in there and then you just wait and then of course you'll have to rinse this with some distilled water and then you'll pour it back in there and then uh, as, until you get all your solids out of there. And then of course, at the end, you let it dry, and then you can weigh it. And of course, one thing I forgot to say is that you'll have to weigh the paper before you actually wet it and you put it in there, so you can actually get the mass difference between them. Okay, and we'll talk about that when we do some filtration in class. So here's the procedure. You mass the filter first, you rinse the solid in the paper with distilled water, you let it dry, and then of course, then you can mass the paper and the solid. And by using conservation of matter, you can then actually figure out what is the mass of the solid because you subtract the two papers from each other. Okay? The third thing is called chromatography. And the technique of chromatography separates substances on the basis of differences in solubility in a solvent. So ink, in particular, is one of those things that we can separate in this class. In any ink, particularly black ink, there's a combination of colors that are in there. And the idea is that when you dip this in water, water will slowly rise up the paper. Water um, will then carry these uh, molecules in the ink di at different rates because certain things that are soluble in there will then be carried further up and things that are not as soluble, like this color on the bottom, don't travel as high up there. And so this technique of chromatography allows us to separate the colors and helps us identify things um, in substances. So this would be an example of a chromatography that was taken. You can see the blue did not, get, did not travel as far. The yellow was able to travel further. And it really relies on the ability of the solvent or the, or the liquid that's down here 
to pull up and then um, carry those solvents, up, uh, the, the mixtures up higher. So that's paper chromatography. And then last but not least, and this technique we haven't really done in this class yet, is called liquid chromatography. And the idea is that you have this column of liquid that's in here. And if you pour in a different liquid that has a higher density, it will, the higher density liquid will then drop and go lower. In the process of dropping and going lower, it's then going to dissolve certain ones and carry those further down. So it's really the opposite of that paper chromatography. This solvent that's actually being poured then carries these liquids to further and further depths and then allows you to then measure which one travels further. And we'll talk about that when we do the lab in class on uh, Wednesday or Thursday. So organization of matter again, um, mixtures, homogeneous and heterogeneous, pure substances, between pure substances, there's compounds and elements. And atoms, of course, are part of the elements. Electrons are in there. Nucleus, we'll talk about the structure of all that. Protons and neutrons are part of the nucleus. And so you want to kind of have this organization chart of all these materials. Don't worry about quarks for now. That's something for us in the future. But this is basically the organization of matter. So that's all for today's lesson. If you have any questions, again, come and see me or email me.